Hello, my name is Beck, and welcome to an Are They Worth It video. This is where I take three books that I've read and I tell you what my thoughts are, what the synopsis is, and whether I think they're worth reading. The three books that I want to talk about in this video are The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, Aragon by Christopher Paolini, and Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. So let's get into it. All of these books are SFF, so science fiction fantasy. Essentially they're fantasy tiered and so if you're not a fantasy reader there are reasons that I think you would enjoy these. But if you like fantasy already or if you don't and want to get into it I'm going to tell you about each book and the tropes and ways you can get into them. So firstly I'm going to talk about The Name of the the Wind. This is an adult fantasy book and it is one of the books that before I knew that I love fantasy I got into it. I have recommended it to friends and after they've read it they haven't really been readers and then they've finished the book and they've been obsessed and they can't stop reading other books as well. So I think it's a very gateway book but it's also a book that is very significant to its time. So if you read a lot of modern fantasy now you might go back to it and pick out certain aspects that you really don't like but I have read it and then reread it and really thoroughly enjoyed it and I think that's because of the writing style. So The Name of the Wind is about quote and you see from him at the very beginning of the book and then he reflects on his life so you see all of the build up to where he is living now. So currently he's in a tavern and he's the tavern master but he encounters a chronicler who wants to chronicle his life because he's a famous wizard and so he goes back and he tells you essentially his life story. So as the reader you are experiencing this time skip of a shift back in his memory and he really immerses you in that. It feels like you're right there with him at the time and I think that is due to like I said the writing style. So Quoth is a young boy. He's with with a traveling troupe of musicians and a series of events occur where he runs into somebody who travels with him for a little while and this guy calls the name of the wind and so there are magical elements in this book and I like that there are two kinds of magic system in here. Brendan Sanderson is one of my favorite authors and he describes magic systems as like a hard magic system or a soft magic system so there is a soft magic system in here where the name of the wind is called and it answers and that's not really explained structurally it is just magic that exists and it's got that mystery and flair to it and so that naturally piques Quoth's interest and he wants to learn about magic and so later on there is a magical academy so it really pulls on that magical school trope like in Harry Potter there was a magical school there for example it's a real big draw card for anybody who wants to read fantasy so that is one of the reasons that I picked this book up and it did not disappoint so it chronicles Quoth at this academy and he's learning a magic system but it's not the same as the calling of the name of the wind. So he learns magic that's more like alchemy and it has real world effects in terms of science but it seems like it's actually magic as well. So if you wanted to lift a coin for example you would have to figure out the weight and the mathematics behind that and your body mass in relevance to it in order to lift it. Like you couldn't do that with a boulder for example because your body is not heavier than the boulder. So it has different measurements in it and different magic system rules in there whereas magic for magic's sake like calling the name of the wind is the mystery and there's also a tragic event at the beginning of the book that informs a lot of Quoth's trajectory and life and so I loved this book personally. I gave it five out of five stars when I first read it and then when I reread it recently and I have a separate review for it but it's a written review that I did on my blog. So not a video review but it is worth a read because I go back and reread it and remember how much joy that book gave me and like I said it's a book that I began with so it's a book that is really palpable if you are beginning fantasy because again the way that it's just one perspective character so you don't have to learn like in Game of Thrones a ton of names a ton of politics and a ton of significance you just get Quoth's story it is just from his perspective it is just about his character growth and his journey and while there are side characters it's really easy to get invested in him so that is why I would recommend The Name of the Wind obviously I thought it was worth it but now do I think the other two books on this list are worth it. The next one I want to talk about is Aragon by Christopher Paolini and this is another book that I started reading when I first got into the genre of fantasy and it really tugged on those foundational tropes. What I'm talking about is Aragon and he is a farm boy and there is a farm boy that goes from rags to riches and that's essentially what Aragon went through. So in the beginning of the book I don't remember it too clearly because I read it 
years and years and years ago now, but there is a film adaptation that we won't talk about because it doesn't go into all of the mythological lore that is in the book. So if you want like a rough guide to what Aragon is, watch the movie and that gives you surface level. If you want to know more, obviously read the book and you will get a lot more involved information. So Aragon is a farm boy. He encounters magic for the first time. There is an old mentor who kind of teaches it to him alongside sword fighting. And then there's a quest and there's mythical creatures like dragons. And I loved how it incorporated a bunch of different fantasy tropes into one story that followed again one character. So the reason that I'm talking about this in the same video as The Name of the Wind is that it started my journey in reading fantasy so it was very foundational for me but in addition to that it also really only has Aragon that you need to worry about and as Aragon is learning things throughout the book that is also when the reader is learning them. So you don't have to take on all this magical world building all at once. It's fed to you through bite-sized pieces and experiences through Aragon experiencing them. I will say, however, that the writing in The Name of the Wind to me personally was top tier and very lyrical and magical. But when I look at the writing in Aragon, because the author wrote it when he was a teenager, a lot of the writing in there is just very simplified. Not simplified in a bad sense, just very cut and dry, very is what it is. Whereas Patrick Rothfuss wrote The Name of the Wind as an adult and he had a bit more experiences and life experiences in general. So he understood more of his style and flair and understood how to capture that in a prose form. Whereas Aragon is not quite the same. So if you're looking for a fantasy book that's like your first foray into fantasy ever, Aragon has some brilliant tropes in there that is going to set you up for understanding the genre for one and also being able to experience it and having an open mind going into a more simplified version. It is a series, it looks long but the writing is large and the concepts are easy to grasp because they're fed to you gradually. So I think Aragon is great for a start but if you're into fantasy already I tried going back and rereading Aragon and I really struggled because the writing style is something that I've developed past at this point and so I look back on it as a good experience but I couldn't go back and reread it and re-experience all the emotion that I did the first time. So is Aragon worth it? I would say yes but depending on what kind of reader you are I would say no. For me was it worth reading when I first began fantasy? Yes. Would it be worthwhile now to go back and reread it? No, I don't think I would enjoy it now, but I enjoyed it in the past and I think a beginning reader, like I said, would really like it and would benefit from reading it as well, especially because you get to experience all of those tropes from the ground level as he builds them up across a four or five book series. I think he did a great job with that. And then lastly, we're going to talk about Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. This is quite a popular fantasy series and it's often marketed as young adult where it's really not. It's kind of on the borders of young adult and adult, which I'll call new adult because the characters are 18 plus, they're coming into their 20s I believe, and when they're on that cusp they're becoming adults. And so what this series starts with is a girl named Selena Sardothian. She is an assassin but she's been captured and she's about to be put to death. The reason that she gets pulled out of this situation is because there is a trial or quest for either the prince or the king and they want this set of items or they want somebody tracked down. Either way it's like a contest and there are a bunch of contestants on death row and so the winner of this contest becomes a worker for the king. Like his left hand man to basically do all of the assassinations that he needs to carry out in order to hold his throne. So Selena's like yes I'm an assassin I'll do that I don't want to die today and that's essentially how the story begins. There is fey magic weaved through it not so much in the first book more so later in the series and I loved the first book. I gave it five stars. It was such a fast paced romp of a book and it had a lot of action sequences in it. I found Selena very sarcastic and hard line. She would not give in when you expected her to. She was a really tough main character and she was just very mouthy as well which I quite enjoyed. She wouldn't take it from anybody and I like that as a protagonist. It means that she'll actually fight against things, fight against expectations and actually push the story forward because she's experiencing things and forcing situations to happen rather than sitting back and just kind of letting the plot happen to her. I really quite enjoyed that about it. What I didn't enjoy about it because I stopped reading this series is that I picked it up for a fantasy that had an assassin protagonist, it had magic, it had a contest, it had royalty and politics with this character who would just toe the line the whole time and wouldn't take it from anybody.
anybody. That's why I picked up the series and it did keep some of those roots but at the same time it went more into romance than it did into fantasy and I'm not a huge fantasy romance reader so it went really far down the romance path to the point where there are sex scenes in the later books. A lot of the characters tend to pair up with each other, there are love triangles and stuff and so while that stuff can be interesting personally it's not really my thing and so I read about four or five books into the series and I just stopped reading because it didn't really hold up for me like that first book did. That first book just had the perfect blend of tension and things that I look for in a fantasy book and unfortunately it didn't carry those things through in a way that I wanted it to for the rest of the series. So is it worth it for me? No, because I don't like romance fantasy. I do like romance in a fantasy but a lot of the time in this series particularly that romance dominated the story and I don't like it when a romance dominates a story when I don't pick up an only romance book. If I want romance to dominate a story I'll pick up a contemporary. If I pick up a fantasy I want quests, magic, fae and murder to basically dominate a story and that's not what happened after the first book really which was disappointing to me. So is the throne of glass worth it? Yes if you love fantasy romance, not really if you're like me and you don't really love romance as a main driving force in your fantasy books. So those are the three books that I wanted to discuss. The Name of the Wind I feel is the takeaway from this video because it is one of my favorites as of today going forward. I loved that book so much. It was the pinnacle of my beginning journey into fantasy and it's a book that I will continue to reread after loving fantasy for so long. The other two are a little bit take it or leave it depending on what kind of reader you are and what where you've started in the genre at the moment but if you pick up any of these, if you've read any of these and you agree or disagree with my ratings I would love to hear you down below. I gave The Name of the Wind a 5, I gave Aragon I think a 4 or 5 when I first read it and I also gave Throne of Glass a 5 stars when I read it too. So all of the same rating initially when I read it but then varied opinions later on when I'm reflecting back which is always interesting to discuss. But thank you so much for watching this video, come and chat to me down below in the comments and I will see you in my next one. Bye!